Hey, what's up guys? Zade here with another episode of Zade's Experience. Today I wanted to talk about carbs. I know this channel has been mainly focused for a very long time on the carnivore diet, but right now since we are getting a little bit more sports specific, sport by sports specific I mean I've been trying to optimize my sports which is running, Muay Thai, Olympic lifting, power lifting, or just regular lifting. All these sports require a certain amount of glucose or a certain amount of energy regardless of the level, regardless of the proficiency at which you are at. So today I'm going to be talking about what I do to fuel my workouts and why I do it. So first let's start off by getting out of the way the whole conversation of are we doing keto, are we doing carnivore, vegetarian, pescatarian, whatever it may be. When you first start getting into the realm of nutrition, those are all fine and good. If you're somebody on a fat loss mission that is trying to maybe lose a couple of pounds, you are the weekend warrior, you know, you go ahead and you do three to four workouts during the week and you just want to look good, you want to maybe lose some weight, that is totally fine. That is a good conversation to have, you know. Those are diets that could potentially help you out, make everything a lot more bearable or, or simplify the process of losing weight or gaining some muscle. However, when you start getting into more elite levels, when you start getting into something a little bit more proficient, and I'm not even talking about super super high elite levels that is something completely different and needs way more specification and needs way more attention to detail but if you start getting into an intermediate level you start to think about i need something that's a little bit more specific to me something that works around what i do and that is where optimizing little things such as your protein intake your fat intake your carb intake really comes into effect just like i mentioned i've been trying to lose weight and i have been succeeding i've been retaining muscle whilst losing losing fat which is the ultimate goal because if we're just talking about losing weight that is quite simple I would just go on the fast and I would lose both muscle and fat one of the biggest things that I've done is keeping my protein intake very high and by high I mean one gram of protein per pound of body weight in my case right now I am at 185 so I'm eating 185 grams of protein as far as fat goes I like to keep it between point four to point five depending at what point in my cut I am if I am not super lean or don't want to get like shredded like crazy then I'll go point five that is the highest I'll go that way I give myself a little leeway because fats are super important and you do require them for so much more than just losing fat you require them for brain function you require them for cardiovascular situations and processes that are going in your body but I think even more importantly than all those for your hormones hormones are a big issue in the bodybuilding community and that's because of what bodybuilders do this is just that's just the nature of the game. Keeping a decent amount of fats in the diet is crucial. The further you get into a sport specific situation, the further you get away from being healthy. Healthy and sport specific nutrition are completely different. And although you are healthy by being very athletic at something, that doesn't mean you are super healthy. One good example is consuming insane amounts of carbs. Your stomach under heavy loads of food, that is not healthy, especially for a very prolonged period of time. You can do it for a minimal amount of time, but let's say you're an athlete that's competing and it's not recovering throughout all its muscle cycles or is not doing periodic training in a very smart way, that could cause a lot of gastric distress and eventually could lead to GI problems, which could eventually take many, many years in a lot of cases to solve. What I do in order to take out the count of carbs that I can eat during the day is whatever those two primary numbers gave me, whatever the protein number gave me, and whatever the fats number gave me, I add both of those up and it'll give me a certain amount of calories. I believe it's like 1,589 calories. And in this situation, I, I you need to know how many calories you are burning in a day. Now I am burning a consistent amount of 2,600 to 3,000 calories. So I'm going to be using the lower portion of that because not every single one of these days that I'm working out, I'm burning the 3000. So my average tends to be 2600. So that's what I'm going to be using. So now what I do is 2600 calories minus the 1589 calories will give me a total of 1011 calories that I can go ahead and use for carbs, which equates roughly to 252 grams of carbs. Now that is a lot of carbs, but granted I am doing a lot of work. Now this doesn't mean that I use these carbs all the time. So what I think a lot of people also don't do 
and this is I think very crucial is portion their carbs properly around their workouts and here's what I mean by that so let's say that I'm gonna have a very very heavy workout today or I'm gonna have two a days which is something that's been happening as of very recently I've been doing running and I've been separating my running and I've been separating my training and my Muay Thai that I sometimes have sparring sessions later later in the evening so even almost three a days so let's say I wake up in the morning and I have a two mile run which isn't heavy at all but if I do it at a high pace that can be very glucose demanding so I'll wake up I'll run fasted and this is just a personal choice there's a lot of studies that say that fasted cardio doesn't do anything others say that it does at this point i do it because i feel okay and i find it very rough to eat in the mornings but at that point i gotta just get my run in i gotta get that in for the day and that's what i do that's what i require doing i haven't lost any muscle i still look pretty decent potentially could i have more muscle if i don't do it yes maybe i don't know but at this point, it's not an issue for me. Your mileage may vary. Again, do what works for you. This is what I do. Immediately after, I'll go ahead and I'll eat. I'll eat about four eggs and about 30 to 50 grams of carbs. The reason for this is that later around one o'clock, two o'clock-ish, I'm gonna need to be uh, working out once again. So I need to have one more meal after this meal. So I will eat those four eggs with those 50 grams of carbs later sometime around 12 o'clock closer to one o'clock ish and i'll have an, another meal 30 to 50 grams of protein and 50 grams of carbs as well even 100 if possible that's going to be the bulk of my carbs for the day now the reason why i'm doing this is i'm trying to pack as most carbs as possible that way i can refuel my carb stores by the time i get to that workout and those carbs that i will consume closer to the workout are going to be all glucose but 15 minutes prior to the workout i will consume some fructose there's a lot of studies that have been showing as of recently that the use of glucose and fructose together far outweigh the use of just glucose alone Eliud kipchoge is somebody that i keep on coming to into these videos that i keep on using as a reference because he is somebody that was trying to do once again something that was above and beyond what most humans do and that was to break a sub two hour marathon and one of the ways that they fueled them and one of the things that they found in the whilst doing study and trying to get to this goal of breaking a sub two hour marathon is they found that when they only gave athletes glucose on its own you know it gave them the average nine percent spike in in power you know like they topped them off which is grown one gram of, of carbohydrates per one minute of activity so within an hour they can only get about 60 grams in and they saw a nine percent increase in performance due to this however when they gave athletes a combination of glucose and fructose fructose again comes from fruits they found that there was a 17 percent spike in performance which is huge especially if you have a monumental task of something like oh breaking a sub two hour marathon that is insane so that is that all those little things again once you start going into the higher echelons of working out when you start getting differentiating from the the intermediate to the professional to the elite level athletes anything that you take any that percent that extra percent really makes a difference so 15 minutes prior to my workout i consume an orange i consume some kind of fruit and by that point sometime earlier in the morning like in either one of the meals that i mentioned already either in the morning with the eggs or my 12 o'clock one o'clock ish meal i will already have had some fruits but the reason why you want to do this as close as possible to the workout so that your body doesn't store that for fat and that is readily available apparently 15 minutes seems to be like the sweet spot right before your workout to properly feel that and along with that i'll probably have some electrolytes such as potassium sodium and magnesium those are ideal that way i can have good pumps during my workout whether it is a weightlifting one or just better contractions of my muscles and that way I'm not cramping or feeling like I could potentially have given it a little bit more. Then after my workout's done, let's say I don't have anything for the rest of the day, my last meal of the day will probably be high protein and if this was a situation like like let's say it was like five o'clock that's usually when my last meal is if i don't have an extra workout i would not hit the carb intake that i set up just like i said those 200 plus grams of carbs that's a lot of carbs if i don't need to go ahead and fully top it off every single day that's fine but i'll get pretty close to the number you know let's say it was 240 or i think let's see 
those 252 grams of carbs, I wouldn't worry so much about hitting them. I would probably stay like around 200 or probably a little bit less if I didn't have an extra workout because I'm not going to be using that. And let's say I do get close to those 3000 calories for the day, I'm going to be okay. I'm probably going to just get a little fruit in, just get a little carbs and that's totally fine. I am very well adapted in between my usage of fats because of the running and the prolonged distance stuff that I do, the sparring. And I also get to use a lot of the other stuff such as for when I do explosive movements like Olympic lifting or even sprinting when I do do runs or just very fast runs that are those are very glycolytic and I feel it and I feel when I can add a little bit of extra carbs and I feel when I don't need those extra carbs and that's something once again that your mileage may vary however if I go ahead and complete that two o'clock workout that I was just mentioning and I have let's say a sparring session about six o'clock seven o'clock I will make sure to feel once again with carbs that's where those extra carbs come in and work in wonders i will put in something like vitargo prior to my workout and vitargo um you just got to look it up it's a supplement that works really well to help you replenish glycogen levels and once again along with some fruit prior 15 minutes prior to my workout to my next workout which would be around six seven o'clock i would get something like a fruit that way we can get that glucose and fructose both together make sure by that point that i have a good amount of electrolytes at that point i've i will have already gone through a bunch of sweat i will have already depleted a lot of electrolyte levels potentially a lot of vitamins so i might be cramping so by that point i will make sure to have all those topped off or if not be drinking for the rest of the day electrolytes that way they're ready for the next day right after that training session get some more protein in and a small amount of carbs and at that point your body will let you know how much you need again i use my whoop to let me know whether i'm going too far off what my daily intake is because something a lot of people don't think about as well is you might be overdoing it you might be pushing way too far i've worked up to this training load i don't do it every day but every now and then i'll go ahead and i'll do something like this and when it comes to that then i'll look at the whoop ha huh. you know i set my calories for this day for 3000 max but today this thing says i burned 3500 4000 calories it, it's happened a couple of times i need to put in more fuel in my body and you have to be okay with that if not you can run down your body once again you can mess your hormones up and let's say you just did this right at the end of a very heavy week it just happens every now and then just like pressuring situation where you could potentially get sick right after or you can come down with something just because you didn't take care of yourself properly because you didn't sleep enough because you didn't eat enough and you kept on pushing and pushing and pushing so rather than to have all that happen just go ahead and eat the extra calories one day that you go above your calorie count doesn't really matter. You still have the rest of the week. It's not like at the middle of the night, you all of a sudden, your, your calorie count just magically goes to zero again. It's not like that. It's think You can think about it a little bit more in the sense of the entire week. And then you will have days where you ate less, where you ate more, but always try to hit your macros as much as possible. And that's how I've been working around the situation of dealing with my Muay Thai, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, running, sprinting, all that stuff. That's how I deal with it, plus my job. All these things add up. Your mental well being is also a great part of it, but that's a video for a completely different day. Hopefully, this serves you guys well on your fat loss challenge. Like I said, I do one gram of protein per pound of body weight, 0.5 grams of fat per pound of body weight at those numbers up and whatever that number is subtracted for from your daily caloric intake once again i'm using 2600 for mine my particular one you're gonna have to track yours by checking how much cal how many calories you eat for like about a week that way you can assess and get a more accurate number and whatever number that gives you the 2600 in my situation minus the protein and the fat and whatever number that gives you that is what you can use for carbs and again you don't have to hit those numbers all the time especially the carbs i think that's the number that can vary a little bit more the protein and the fat i think are a little bit more set in stone but as the carbs depending on how heavy your load is or how good you felt that day try to hit it or get close to it and think about fueling your workouts versus how many carbs or how many things how many how much food you have to eat if it was that case 
go ahead and eat salads, balsamic vinegar, add chicken breast, and that would work fine. You're eating volume, that's what you want, that's what you get. But in my, in my opinion, that is not optimal. That is something that is very hard to abide by and compliance is king in this situation. But hopefully you guys got something out of this. Thanks for joining me on another episode of Safe's Experience. Comment if you liked, sub if you loved it, and I will be seeing you on the next video, guys. Say out. Peace.